Hey, what up, guys? Welcome to the channel. My name is Hugo Mesa, and today we're going to talk about the Boilander Vesa R, so let's jump to it. At some point, a camera manufacturer or industry or company, or by any extent, not just cameras, but any other kind of product that we consume today, try to bring something innovative, break the status quo of what the trend is going on at the time. And today we're gonna to focus on the Voilander Vesa R, which is that product that a couple years ago, you know, sadly didn't take the stuff by storm or to really stick because it come in a weird transition period between film and analog, analog uh, market, jumping to all digital, specifically for camera. And since then, the passing from the R, R2, 3, and 4. This has been a refinement of this camera on those years and those models until the R4, which it was the pinnacle of the R line of the Vesas. This has a really interesting origin because if you're not really into cameras or like in the community, maybe Voilander doesn't resonate with you, but it's a well-known camera brand. Then, you know, at, at that time, a Japanese camera out of nowhere with no experience making cameras at all. They just, you know, pay to use the name and without experience, it brings something really exciting to the market. You need to understand that by the 2000s, I think around the time this camera came to the market, the pinnacle of camera, film camera, specifically at rangefinder, was dominated by Leica. And Leica still until today, you know, hold that name. It's that camera that everybody wants. And a part of me is included in that section. So at the time coming a camera with all these features that rival Leica and even surpass some of those features was kind of unprecedented and really, again, really excited to a lot of the film community photographers. And with that, it was included a nice price tag for this camera. We all know Leica's are expensive, no matter what, that's their market, that's their niche. And they know how to do it really well and how to take advantage of that. There was a camera to bring all those features to a more affordable package to get to the masses. Until that moment, nobody rival Leica viewfinder, which is one of the viewfinders that's been more praised. I seen it and yeah, it's bright, it's clear. You can't complain about that. And then I got this camera. And I put that viewfinder, and I already read some stuff about this viewfinder. And I was like, well, let's check it out. And wow, it was crazy. It was, yeah, it goes toe to toe with the Leica viewfinder and all their M lines. This is a great viewfinder. You're not going to miss anything. It's just beautiful. All the frame lines are there. They work really great. The first thing that caught your attention is the design. Hold on a second. Look at this. Looks awesome, in my opinion. Yes, Leica has like the classic look, and you can't go wrong with that, but this is, is really great. Seems like Batman make it in his Batcave and uses it, you know, when he's on his Batmobile and doing all this stuff, like forens or evidence for photo taking. I think this is the camera Batman will use. I know it sounds silly, but that's how I feel. It's light, it's sturdy enough, Obviously, there are some compromise in the material. There's plastic around, but that's the concession the Casino did back in the day. And to be their first model or attempt to rival um, the high-end market, I think it was a good attempt. Like I mentioned before, the, this camera has all the features that a film camera needs, or most of them that are packed in this camera. It has a great viewfinder, which I already talked about that. It's great. Then you have your frame lines. You have 35, uh, 50, 75 and 90 frame lines so you have all those four options to like you know compose with different lenses also you have a light meter which is a plus at least for me i like to have a light meter just because yeah you can call me maybe lazy but it's there and it works for the most part i still use sony 16 i still maybe have an app in my phone but having a light meter in the camera it's just less stuff to carry and worry about and also it has the um, arrow system, kind of the Leica is the same thing. Two arrows, when the two are on in that center spot, that means you have expo a right exposure. So it's really simple, really easy, nothing crazy or fancy. The light meter works for the most part in most environments. 
until like you get in a really really concerted scene where you know you want to expose somebody and it's in the shadows and you have light in my experience for the time i have it on those situations it's better if you kind of tilt the camera up a little bit on your subject even if you feel your you know meter in the sky it's kind of like for, again on my experience it's kind of like more lower scent like the lower part is where is most of the compensation of the exposition if you can understand that so you tilt a little bit you have a better reading and that kind of helps but it's just in those situations for any other stuff is really reliable i mean it, it needs to be something really extreme one of the other another thing that i experienced at least in my case focusing is when you're close to um like the closest distance focusing i think this is called this parallax problem where it, it's you have the focusing patch where you need to align your subject to know that it's in focus but when you're in the closest distance in the lens that kind of becomes transparent kind of thing it's weird i don't know if it's my unit but that's something i experienced with this camera if we move on to the top plate we have uh iso shutter combo nav that's on top it's big clear easy to understand your iso goes from uh 25 all the way to 32,000 of a second so you have a big range on the shutter speed and it goes from bulb all the way to 2,000 of a second and that's a double because the Leica only gets until like the thousand one one of a thousand of a second so you know you have flexibility especially if you're in a bright environment and you don't want to carry filters that's really helpful one something to notice is the knob is kind of more stiffer than other cameras I don't think it's a big deal this almost eight months that I have it I just get used to it it's something that you work around it's just you use more force but maybe for you that's a, a downside the shutter bottom works really great the only thing is it's not as stiff as all the cameras again so you do the half half press to do the meter and sometimes it goes all the way down countless times it's not like always happened to me just sometimes it's something that you know out of a roll of film maybe one time I did it, if I'm being too, you know, excited and I'm just not blasting, but you know, I'm in a, in a flow, maybe two, but that's so far, that's how much I lost, which I know it's a lot because you know, film is not cheap. The film advanced leveler feels great and sturdy enough, but you can tell it's made of plastic. So I don't know, you know, if it will wear off over time or if one day I just put too much force, it will break. Only time will tell, but again, it's between eight, almost a year that I have this camera, and so far it's been fine. The film rewind system is pretty simple. The only difference is this camera has a button on the bottom plate that you push to unlock the system to let the film go. And then you go into the top plate and you have this metal kind of pool or yeah, kind of thingy. <laughs> you kind of, you know, roll, 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 roll back, and it's not kind of metal it feels more like aluminum or something so again it comes down to maybe one day i'm really excited and I'm, i want to change roll really fast and i go really hard and kind of you know detach or something because it seems kind of like sturdy like that i mean flimsy like that so something to consider it's not that bad but again these got refined you know with gears in the other model hochu flash is there it works it works with pc sync or just connected on top directly I personally don't use much of flash with film um, but it's there if you want it and it works one of the reason people go or you know root for the rangefinder format is because it tend to be more quieter in this alert and a little bit smaller I don't think that's as small as people make it seems like if you pull like this movement is so universal that most of the people know you're taking a picture for the most part so I don't know if, if you're like a ninja but definitely a lot of the cameras in this format are quieter. They have clutch shutter. On this camera, you have a metal shutter and it's more louder than let's say Leica or my Sorky. Definitely more quieter than SLR. There have been several, a couple of times, not several, but a couple of times that people notice it, they took a picture because they hear the shutter. So it's up to you to, you know, know if it bothers you or not, something you need to kind of here uh, maybe if you want I can do a comparison the load film system is really simple and I like that because with the sword key I need to unhook the bottom plate and there's this thing floating around 
And I'm really careful with my things, but accident happens and I can see that maybe at some point losing it. And it's a part that's not that easy. Also, they have the film spool inside. It's another two parts actually that's, you know, floating around and like, if you can avoid that, that would be great. And the range finder, sort of, um, Besa, sorry, has a more SLR style. You open it, you put the film, just, you, you know, follow through the lines, start springing a little bit and then you're ready to go. It has the film counter on top. Everything is laid out really great and clear. On the lens department, we have the awesome old Leica M39. 39 sorry screw mount which is really flexible you have a lot of lenses of great quality and actually affordable because the new M mount they tend to be more pricey and obviously there's you know the, the mount they Leica uses now and a few a small amount of the cameras but for the most part you know that's what they use M39 has a big line Nikon Canon um, obviously Voilander Leica lenses and also if you go to the Russian markets, they're also like really cheap and great lenses around with a lot of character. So that's a plus and it's so great. Again, this is the first iteration, the R2 to R4, they changed to the new M mount. Another cool thing about this, either the camera broke or let's say you wanna jump to the Leica or another M mount camera, you can adapt these lenses. There's small adapters and you can, you know, has after life use, after your camera break or you decide to get a different camera. So to kind of almost finish it up, quirks that I found this camera, they're not much to be honest. Maybe the building of the whole um, camera, like I can take my Sorky and throw it away and I know it's gonna work almost 100% after I pick it up. With this camera, mm, I don't know, I will be a little bit more careful. I maybe can deal one or two falls. The other thing researching online is sometimes these cameras suffer a lot of misalignment of the focusing patch, the horizon and the vertical. Uh, mostly the vertical one, but it's fixable. It's not super pricey. There's websites and people that fix these issues. One of them is camerquest18.com. But again, there's so many, you can just Google the problem, misalignment, VESA, focusing patch, and, for the, and you're gonna find options for sure. But it's there and it can happen. And if you're buying on eBay or, you know, some other photographer that you know, please ask to them. I mean, I guess it's your choice. But I, in my personal opinion, I will ask if the camera that you're getting has this problem. Just because it's more easy to avoid this. Again, it's fixable, but you don't want to deal with this, all these problems. Just to finish this video, the only thing I can tell you is this is a great investment. It's an awesome camera. It has a lot of features, even more than other cameras at the time. Again, didn't get a lot of tracking back in the day, but today is getting a lot of attention. And if you're, you know, you have a limited budget and you don't want to buy the most expensive, the R2 or R3 or 4 or a Leica, I think this is a great alternative for you. The, you know, have 300 all the way to like 500. Mine, I got it for uh, 250 on eBay, which is a great price because I can notice, you know, the price is racing people that are getting more involved with film and the more, you know, it's just the whole market thing, offer and demand. So if you're in that fence, you don't wanna, you don't have tons of money, but you want, let's say, step up from, um, I don't know, fixed lens rangefinder camera, this is a great investment and option. So that's it for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this little review of the Voilander Vesa R. It's been a fantastic camera. Um, and it's hard to choose because, to be honest, the other camera, <laughs> I didn't say the name that I got recently. One more second. It's this one right here. Yep, I got one of these ones. One of the, I guess, the side ones or whatever. I got a great deal and I couldn't let it pass. So I got this, but I mean, dude, check this. I mean, it's really hard. Again, this is the classic look can go wrong with that but this has aggressive edgy look man it's so hard and i need to decide which one i need to let go and probably you already know which one i'm gonna let go but that's for another video this one needs to go to sleep today is not about the leica and here it is guys let me know what you think about the video about the camera if you have questions if i miss something i can definitely i try to answer most of the questions if i have the great information you know, like, share, and all that stuff. 
so I can bring more content. I have tons of new film that I'm gonna try. I know I'm trying my best. I know it's been a month since the last episode and I guess for now that's kind of like the sort of schedule but I'm gonna try to squeeze more stuff. Books that I've been using and talk just in general film, you know. Um, I guess hashtag billionaire film. Let's keep rolling with our cameras and our rolls of films. Until the next one, adios.